بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر جمیل فرام دا فیزیولوجی ڈپارٹمنٹ ایف ایم جو فیصل آباد دس لیکچر از ان سیکوینس از اے تھائرائڈ ہارمون دیٹ از اے پارٹ آف دا اینڈوکرنالوجی اینڈ دا سلائڈ ان فرنٹ آف یو از کنسرن ود دا ڈفرینس بٹوین دا ٹی تھری اینڈ ٹی فور دیز ٹو ٹی تھری اینڈ ٹی فور ایز یو نو فرام دا پریویس لیکچر دیٹ دے آر پروڈیوسڈ فرام یور تھائرائڈ گلینڈ اینڈ الٹیمیٹلی دے آر سیکریٹیڈ ان یو دا بلڈ اسٹریم Now the T3, it is four times more potent than the T4, while the T4 is less potent. Although the net quantity of the T4 is produced much more, but it is less potent. While the T3 in quantity wise, it is far less, but it is action is four times more potent as compared to the T4. <coughs> Then the peak effect reaches within 24 to 48 hours. Its peak effects Uh, in contrast to this, the T4, the peak effect reaches in 6 to 8 hours. Then the plasma protein binding capacity is less as compared to the plasma proteins of the T4. Then it is active in vitro, while T4 is inactive in vitro. Now the thyroid gland produces 20% of the T3. The thyroid gland on the opposite side, you will see the T4 thyroid gland produces 80% of the T4. Some books say the thyroid uh, T4 is produced 90%, but some books say 80%. Now T3 is an active form. T4 is less active as compared to the T3. Now, the control of the thyroid function. You know that from this diagram that in center we have got a thyroid gland. This is a thyroid gland. This thyroid gland is actually activated by the hormone which is produced by the anterior pituitary that the thyroid stimulating hormone. And this thyroid anterior pituitary itself is stimulated by the hypothalamus through thyrotropin releasing hormone, TRH. So the TRH produced by the hypothalamus is going to stimulate the anterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary produces the TSH, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone, and ultimately this is going to stimulate your thyroid gland but its control is also with a negative feedback if the t3 and t4 in circulation they are more they have got negative effect on the anterior pituitary to produce less tsh and they also have got the negative effect on the hypothalamus to produce less trh that means if the quantity of the t4 and the th t3 is more in circulation it has got negative feedback and they will reduce the stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary that is the TSH and they also reduce the thyroid stimulating uh, thyroid thyrotropic release hormone TRH from the hypothalamus. So this is a negative feedback control of the thyroid uh, gland secretions. Now this is the same thing which is written here that the thyrotropin releasing hormone it is going to stimulate the TSH. TSH is going to stimulate the production of T4, T3 and it has got negative effect by feedback to the TSH and the TRH. T4 released by the thyroid hormone is mostly converted to the T3 by the liver and the kidney by type 1 hydrothionine 5 prime diiodinase. Actually this is an name of the enzyme 5 prime diiodinase. Its complete name is hydrothionine hydrothyronine 5 prime diiodinase. Secondly the type 2 diiodinase 5 prime diiodinase is found in the brain and pituitary that maintain the constant levels of T3 in the TSH, oh sorry, T3 in the CNS. Now the mechanism of action of the thyroid hormone. Actually this thyroid hormone, the main function is to stimulate the DNA to form more and more RNA and ultimately the formation of different types of the proteins. The details are over here. The TSP4 dissociates with a carrier protein and diffuses through the cellular membrane into cytosol where it is converted to T3 by deiodinase enzyme. Then this T3 binds with a nuclear receptor protein, hormone receptor protein complex binds to the hormone receptor element or the thyroid response element TRE, thyroid response element on the DNA initiation of the transcription and protein synthesis. Actually, you can't understand all these reading things. Let's see a diagram to make you understand the things. Here is a diagram for your easiness. You can see 
that here you can see follow my cursor that this is the T4 which is already binded with the carrier protein that is known as the thyroglobulin binding uh, thyroid binding the thyroxine binding globulin TBG it is produced by the liver and 99% of the th thyroid hormone that thyroxine is bind with this protein first of all this T4 has to separate itself from the carrier protein here you can see the T4 is separated from this protein and this T4 enters into the cytoplasm from here in the cytoplasm which is again going to bind another protein after conversion into the T3 this T4 is converted into T3 by removal of uh, by the action of deiodinase enzyme which is known as the 5 prime deiodinase enzyme it causes the conversion of T4 into T3 and this T3 is going to bind with another protein in the cytoplasm then again T3 has to remove itself from the protein now the T3 alone is going to enter into the nucleus into the nucleus it is going to bind a receptor into the nucleus going to bind a receptor and this is your receptor protein after attaching itself with the DNA it is going to do something else let's see into the next diagram here you can see that this is a thyroid hormone receptor these are TR thyroid hormone receptors and this is you known the retinoid X retinoid 10 uh, so this is called retinoid X retinoid receptor this is retinoid receptor they are very close to the DNA and this area is known the thyroid response element this area so once the thyroid hormone bind to its receptor over here it will cause a transcription in the gene and after this transcription they are going to produce messenger RNAs these messenger RNA will move out and they will perform different functions for example they will enhance the formation of sodium potassium pump they will enhance the formation of gluconeogenic enzyme they will enhance the respiratory enzyme they will enhance the production of myosin heavy chains they will enhance the production of beta adrenergic receptors and many many other things so all these things first there is attachment of the thyroid hormone receptor and this receptor is very close to this and all this area is known as a thyroid response element the TRE then genes they are going to do the transcription ultimately messenger RNA is formed this messenger RNA is formed under the response of the T3 this is the T3 which is going to enter over here this T3 and ultimately this messenger RNA will perform the production of different type of proteins which are different type of enzyme including your sodium potassium pump, respiratory myosin beta adrenergic and many many other things so this was all about the mechanism of action of the thyroid hormone and all these things are written in this uh, in this uh, word or you can say writing now let's another thing how the what is the function of the action of the TSH the function of the TSH the thyroid stimulating hormone what it do with the thyroid gland it increase the proteolysis of the thyroglobulin occurs within minutes that is the breakdown of the thyroglobulin thyroglobulin is a chain of protein so it is a chain of amino acid which is broken down by the TSH second the increase the activity of the iodide pump as you know from the previous lecture that iodide pump is responsible for the trapping of the iodides into the uh, cells then increase iodination of the thyro tyrosine then increase size and increase secretory activity of the thyroid cells then increase number of the thyroid cells so all these functions they are and under the effect of these, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone thyroid glands make its complete or you can say more become more efficient to produce more and more thyroxine this is our previous diagram this is a previous diagram also you have uh, I have elaborated all these things and move to the next now what are the different functions of this thyroid hormone the general metabolism the most important thing now we are moving to the very important topic the functions of the thyroid hormone T3 and T4 now keep in mind that T4 is released in more quantity into the plasma while main thing required by the by the body is the t3 although t4 is more in so t4 is more in quantity but we need t3 so t4 is converted into t3 before its action 
so all these actions are written over here increase the metabolic rate the bmr is increased and oxygen consumption of the most of the tissues body are increased exceptions are this is your mcq testes uterus lymph nodes anterior pituitary then increase synthesis of the eight sodium potassium pump i have already told you that this sodium potassium pump activity is enhanced under the effect of thyroid hormone that increase the size number and activity of the mitochondria is very important you need energy for the development for the growth for the function of the atps because atps needs energy for its function so your uh, thyroid gland thyroxine is going not only going to produce only the atps it also increase the activity or number of the mitochondria that will lead to the increase rate of formation of atp to energize the cellular function so basically gen generally you can say that your thyroxine is going to stimulate the production of more and more sodium potassium pump and at the same time it increases the size number and the activity of the mitochondria and this increase the generation of the formation of atp to energize the cellular function now we have got the different uh, you can say function for example the bmr excessive thyroid hormone can increase the bmr up to 60 to 100% when no thyroid hormone is produced or you can say when there is a lack of thyroid hormone the bmr may reduce one half of the normal so the bmr is increased due to the end of the effect of your thyroid stimulating hormone and how much it can increase it can increase up to 60 to 100% then weight thyroid hormone reduces the weight but increase the appetite this thyroid hormone thyroxine reduce the weight why, why the weight is reduced because high bmr during hypothyroidism there is a weight gain hypothyroidism patient has suffering from the hypothyroidism they have, they are more obese then on the C cvs cardiovascular system its effects are different Ca effects on the cardiac output effect on the heart rate then the heart strength blood pressure all these are sum up in this slide on the cf on the cardiac output you will see that there is increased metabolism of the heart increased metabolism of the cardiac muscle it will cause the increased production of the carbon dioxide actually the, generally the metabolism of whole body is increased that's why when the metabolism of the whole body is increased the more and more production of carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide lead to the vasodilatation then the with there is the vasodilatation the, the diameter is going to increase the increased blood flow especially in the skin and this uh, blood flow in the skin will assist into in the elimination of the heat the cardiac output may increase up to 60% under the effect of the thyroxine then heart rate increase heart rate is more as compared to the cardiac output here it, it means that cardiac output also increase but heart rate is more increase as compared to if you compare it with the cardiac output there is more increase in the heart rate and tachycardia that is increase heart rate heart rate above 100 is known as the tachycardia this tachycardia is taken as a sign by the clinician that is if the patient came to the clinician or a doctor and saying that i have got palpitation repeated attacks of the palpitation and if this palpitation is heart rate is above 100 or is more than the normal then the doctor must suspect that the patient may be the hyperthyroidism may have more and more thyroxine in his body then the heart strength in mild increase in the thyroid hormone due to increased enzymatic activity cardiac strength is enhanced excessive long term thyroid hormone secretion cardiac strength may depress and may lead to the cardiac failure that means in initial stages in the mild increase that will increase the enzymatic activity and heart strength cardiac strength will be more it will be enhanced but if there is excessive uh, thyroxine for a longer duration then secretion of the cardiac uh, then the cardiac strength may be depressed and ultimately it may lead to the cardiac failure that means initially there is increase and in the long term it may be depressed leading to the failure then the blood pressure mean arterial pressure remains normal that means the mean artery pressure is mean normal but the pulse pressure is increased that is the difference between the systolic and the diastolic is increased due to increase in systolic blood pressure and decrease in the diastolic blood pressure so the pulse pressure is increased 
So this was the, these were the all effects on the CVS. Now effects on the CNS. Generally, it has got excitatory effects on the CNS. Increased cerebration. This is a sentence of Urdu. What is meant by the cerebration? This is the word taken or written in the Gaitan, and it means how much you spend your brain or your thoughts to for, to solve a problem. That is dimagi soj vichar ka amal. Cerebration. How much thoughts you spend, how much mind you spend to solve a problem. This is like known as cerebration. So increase cerebration, increase myelination, promote growth and development of the brain in the fetal life. These all are the actions of uh, heart, this thyroxine on the CNS. And the hyperthyroid people may have other problems. That is extreme worry. They have got anxiety problems. They have got paranoia. So all these things, they are the also the effects of hyperthyroidism is more and more thyroid seen if the patient may be worried about for a minor thing it may have the paranoia that means psychological problems so although it's going to promote your growth although it's going to increase your celebration but at the same time persistently if there is hyperthyroidism you may have to face an anxiety and other things regarding this one then effects on the muscles during hyper state initially muscle react with more power but later on, muscle response becomes weak due to protein catabolism. In hypostates, what happens when there is less th thyroid hormone? Muscle becomes sluggish and relaxed slowly after contraction. Fine muscle tremor is a sign of hyperthyroidism. Actually, if you, if you extend the both hands forward and put a piece of paper on the back of the, on the dorsal portion of the hand, there you may feel there is a fine tremor. These are not the coarse tremors. They are fine tremors you can see in the patient of hyperthyroidism. Due to the increase, and why this is hyper uh, fine tremors? Because of increased reactivity of the smilon cord synapses. Then the sleep, the effect on sleep. Actually, the sleep is also concerned with the topic from brain. Difficult to sleep, tiredness due to excessive neuronal activity. That means the patient with hyperthyroidism, they may have a difficulty to fall asleep due to tiredness and this is due to the excessive neuronal activity. While in hypostates, extreme solemnness, sleep hours, in, that means the patient has got a long term sleep hours, that they may extend up to 12 to 14 hours. That means the patient throughout the day patient can be in a sleeping state due to the hypothyroidism. Actually, the hypothyroid patient, they become lazy, they become obese, they have got long or you can say extended periods of sleep. All these are the signs and symptoms of the hypothyroidism. And at this point, keep in mind, the females after menopause, they are more, uh, you can say, prone to the hypothyroidism. Uh, we'll see later on all these things. Then thyroid hormone function effect on the carbohydrates. Incre it increases the uptake of the glucose from the GIT. Rapid uptake of glucose by the cells, increase gluconeogenesis, increase glycolysis, increase insulin secretion. That means all these things. First of all, it will absorb the more and more glucose from the GIT. Then it will cause the entry of glucose or push the glucose into the cell. Then no, it is not going to stop over here. That is absorption and the pushing of the glucose into the cell. It also causes the formation of glucose from the other sources. Then last one, the second last one, that it also leads to the breakdown of the glycolysis, breakdown of the glucose. That means actually we need energy. Whenever there is more and more thyroid, you need energy and it's coming from the glucose. And when the glucose is more in the body, there's a gluconeogenesis, increase uptake, definitely we need more insulin for the entry of glucose into the cell. So increase insulin secretion. That overall you can say the thyroid hormone is going to enhance your glucose level and at the same time insulin secretion then we move to onward the fat in the liver and the, these effects are uh, complex you can say decrease concentration of cholesterol what happens with the thyroid of thyroxine is going to decrease the concentration of the cholesterol phospholipids triglycerides in the plasma but free fatty acids they are increased free fatty acids they are increased how, how it happens? How? Increase secretion of cholesterol in the bile and consequent loss in the feces. Actually, how the cholesterol is going to decrease? The answer is 
that cholesterol is more secreted in the bile and ultimately they lost in the feces. This is the way in which the cholesterol level is lowered down in the case of hyperthyroidism. And then it increases, the thyroxine increases the receptor for the low density lipoprotein in the liver. And these receptors trap the low density lipoprotein and move this lipoprotein LDL into the liver. As you know that the LDL is more dangerous as compared to HDL which is your favorable. But LDL is dangerous for you. So it is absorbed into the liver. Once it is taken up by the liver, the subsequent secretion of cholesterol in these lipoproteins. That means the cholesterol is attached with them, it is secreted. Then increase the requirement of the vitamins. That means whenever there is a metabolism, there is a high metabolism under the effect of thyroxine, most of the hormone which is, in, which is going to increase many enzymes and coenzymes. Definitely at the same time the vitamins, they are acting as a coenzyme for these enzymes most of the vitamins. So the, they in, uh, enhance the requirement of the vitamins also. So the vitamins at the test time, the vitamins are deficient. That means vitamins are utilized, more vitamins are utilized under the effect of thyroxine. So the vitamins are deficient in these patients. You can again, I'm going to repeat to make you understand that thyroid hormone, they increase your enzyme and coenzyme definitely sure. These enzymes and coenzymes, they need the vitamins as their coenzymes. So the, there is a deficiency of vitamins. This is the thing that the requirement of vitamins are increased. That is, you have to take more and, more and more vitamins when you are suffering from the hyperthyroidism. Next, you say the effect on the other endocrine glands. This is very important. Thyroxine increases the glucose metabolism we have seen in the previous uh, slide all over the body. At the same time, it increases the secretion of insulin from the pancreas. That means the thyroxine, not only the, it is a hormone which is going to affect another uh, hormone, another endocrine gland, that is the pancreas. So thyroxine causes the more secretion of insulin because it is going to enhance the more and more glucose metabolism. Second ex example is that the th metabolic activity related to bone formation is enhanced under the effect of thyroxine. So increased parathyroid hormone is required for the bone formation. We will see later on what is the function of the parathyroid hormone. So parathyroid hormone secretion is also increased. So we have seen that the thyroxine increase the, it, sorry, it is going to affect your pancreas, it is going to affect your parathyroid gland. Again, the glucocorticoid. The glucocorticoid secretions by the adrenal gland, they are increased. What is the mechanism by which, how they are increased? Increase in activation of glucocorticoids by the liver. Actually, under the effect of thyroxine, there is a glucocorticoids are inactivated by the liver. This will cause the increased secretion of ACTH due to the negative feedback and this increased secretion of ACDH will cause the increased production of glucocort, glucocorticoids. So, glucocorticoid secretions are enhanced under the effect of thyroxine. So, the thyroxine is going to affect the secretion of your insulin, secretion of your parathyroid gland, secretion of your glucocorticoids from the adrenal gland. So, these are the effects of, end, of the thyroxine on the other endocrine glands. Next, the sexual function. The first line is very simple, that is the lack of thyroid hormone may cause loss of libido, that desire for the sex is decreased and the excess of thyroid may cause impotence, that means you can't perform the sexual act, impotence, you can't perform it, excess of thyroid hormone. So in both cases, whether you are suffering from hypothyroidism or you are suffering from the hyperthyroidism, in both these cases your sexual function of the men, they are going to be disturbed. But in the woman, again, the effects are very much different in complex. The lack of thyroid hormone, what the effects are from menorrhagia, that excessive menstrual bleeding to the amenorrhea, the no, no, menses, no menstruation. From a huge menorrhagia, huge menstrual bleeding from to up to the no menstrual bleeding. And loss of libido, that means loss of desire to perform the sexual act. So, all these things are the, they are the function, uh, effects on the sexual function on the sexual function of men and the women. Now we move to another thing which is very important. What are the different drugs 
let's see what are the different drugs which are we are going to use in case of hyperthyroidism or in case of the hypothyroidism in case of hypothyroidism the drug is very simple which is not over here that is the thyroxine we give the patient thyroxine which is going to be converted into the t actually we give the t4 which is converted to t3 in the body and ultimately it is utilized by the body as a thyro as a thyroid hormone no problem it is a very simple sentence although which is not over written over here but the problem is in case of hypothyroidism in the hypothyroidism oh sorry because the problem is with the hyperthyroidism whenever there is hyperthyroidism we have to use different drugs in hypo we use only thyroxine we add the thyroid hormone in the body is very cheap drug and no problem patient can take the thyroxine throughout the life now in case of hyperthyroidism we have to reduce the function of the thyroid gland and we have got different drugs we move from the top that is the thiocyanate ions or as you can say thiocyanate ions they decrease the iodide trapping and their side effect is the vital actually let me explain the things the thiocyanate ion you know from the previous lecture that there is a iodide trapping mechanism there is a pump present over here which is known as sodium iodide pump that causes the movement of iodide from the plasma into the follicular cells so this pump is a trapping that is the first step that is the movement of iodide into the cell this is stop thiocyanate is going to block that pump and when this pump is blocked definitely then thyroxine is not produced when thyroid thyroxine is not produced there is a more and more production of the tsh to stimulate the thyroid hormone thyroid gland ultimately it will lead to the goiter that is goiter means simply the enlargement of the thyroid gland it may be a hypothyroid it may be hyperthyroid whenever there is enlargement or or you can say in the size of the gland is large we call it as a goiter so thiocyanates ion they although they affect when their effect is very good they decrease their mechanical action is they decrease the iodide trapping but ultimately they may lead to the goiter then the propyl thiouracils that is the carbamazole and metimazole these are the commonly used drugs they block the hydrogen hydrox hydrogen peroxidase enzyme the hydrogen peroxidase enzyme actually these peroxidase enzyme they are very important in the uh, organification and the pairing of the uh, during the formation of the thyroid hormone you have seen this in my previous lecture that how the thyroid hormone is synthesized so this hormone this enzyme is blocked so there is a decrease production of thyroid hormone ultimately when there is a decrease production what happens there is more production of, due to the negative feedback there will be more production of the tsh and it will stimulate the more and more to your thyroid gland leading to the goiter again the side effect of this one is the goiter then last one is very important which is uh, although very very important is usually use these high concentration of iodide before surgery patient has to use the uh, ligol iodine which is available in the market it contains the high concentration of the iodide these high iodides they decrease the iodide trapping they cause the they decrease the endocytosis of the colloid actually when thyroxine is formed within the colloid then there is they are absorbed back into the cell through the process of endocytosis so on one side they decrease the iodide trapping secondly they decrease the endocytosis process and at the same time they decrease all the thyroid activity they decrease the size and vascularity of the gland also they decrease the size and vascularity of the thyroid gland this is very important that means they are not leading they are not going to cause the goiter and when they decrease the vascularity the blood vessel level that means when the surgeon is going to perform his surgery there will be chances of less bleeding so this ligol iodine containing high concentration of potassium iodides they are prescribed to the patient before surgery to reduce the size and the bleeding tendencies so dear students this was all about the uh, drugs concerned with this the effects of this hormone now in the next lecture we will see the uh, thyroid function test and the abnormalities of the thyroid gland thank you very much